Thank you, Madam Tastemaster. <coughs> it's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small, small world. I have a great voice. Don't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm sure you've all heard of this song. I remember when I first heard the lyrics, I was thinking, is that true? Is it really a small world? You know, they say that jet travel has made the world a smaller place. But that's merely just a perspective, because we can get from one place to another much quicker. I think we all have an idea of the size of the world, but it's always fun to be reminded of that. So I'm going to take you tonight on a journey. You don't need your passport. There's no long flights. You don't need to pack any bags. In fact, you don't even have to leave your chair. All that you require is your imagination. Let's find out together if the world really is that small. I'd like you to imagine that you are like a satellite which can orbit the Earth. And you can zoom right in as far as you'd like to go. Let's zoom in right now to where we are here, in this hall, sitting here at our meeting. See yourself here. And now I'd like you to zoom out just one level, just enough so you can see this street, Alexander Road. Many more buildings along the street, like this one, maybe about 90 or so houses and units. Inside these units, and houses, 500 people or so. Now most of these people you're never ever going to meet in your life, you'll never cross paths with them. So bear in mind we're only zooming out one level so far, but do you still think the world is really small? Let's keep going. Let's zoom out another level. Now we can see the whole suburb of Clayfield full of many other streets and buildings, restaurants, shops. Now most of us are just here as a visitor to this suburb because we're here for our Toastmasters meeting. It's just one small suburb, but we'll never really get time just to, to explore it all. Let's keep going. We pull back now, we can see the whole of Brisbane, full of many other suburbs. So big, in fact, you have to divide it up into different areas, north, south, east or west. To some people, going from one area to another is like going on a road trip, even if it's only 20 minutes. But even if you live in this city your whole life, there's still parts of this you'll never see. There's roads you'll never drive down, bridges you'll never cross. There's no time to stop now as we move out even further, over the state of Queensland. Now, we take the ocean for granted because we live right beside it. But from where we are now, we can see areas of the state where people have never seen the ocean at all. Because it's just too far away. Do you think the world suddenly seems a lot bigger? Well, we haven't even really started, so we can move back even further now, over the country of Australia. Six states, two territories. Now, some people will never leave this country. For them, the world, their world is just already big enough. Finally, we move back as far as we can go. We can see the whole world in front of us. 193 countries. Now I'm a pretty average traveller, but I've only seen 10 of those so far. In my life, I might be lucky to see another 20. That's just 15% of the world that I'll step foot in. As we stand up here looking over what some Disney song describes as being a small world, we remember how far we've come from a small community hall right up 
out through the country, over the whole world. You can see the whole planet in front of us. I ask you again to consider, do you think the world is small? Before you answer this question though, I ask you to consider this. I've only merely given you a perspective of the size of the world. Much like the perspective I gave about jet travel, making the world a small place. To turn your back around now with your back facing the earth and looking out to what's beyond. The solar system. The Milky Way galaxy. The rest of the universe. I guess in the scheme of things, the world really is just a small speck. But we don't have time to explore this now. Perhaps that's a conversation for another evening. It is now time to head back. And I'd like you to imagine that since we began this journey, we've been stretching out on a giant rubber band. And we've pulled back as far as we can go. And the tension is now released. We rapidly catapult back down through the planet into Australia, Queensland, Brisbane, Clayfield, Alexandra Road, and now here we are, back safely in the community hall where we started. I hope you enjoyed this trip tonight. When you get home, have a think about how far you took from here to there. Maybe just a small journey, but in the whole scheme of things, maybe you can answer the question, how small is the world, really? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Madam Toastmaster, Toastmasters all, and welcome guests. David began his speech with a song. It is a small world after all, I'm not going to sing it. And with that song, he relaxed us as we slide in with his speech. And to make sure that we are with him in his speech, if at the end of the song, he even asked us a question. Right? I have a great voice, haven't I? You see, that kind of question got us all hooked. So, technique. Great technique in the opening. I love that. And then he said, I'm taking you all for a journey. That's how, that was how his, he, his transition from the opening to the body of the speech. That gave us him a very smooth, uh, seamless transition. Very well done indeed. I like the body of the speech. I felt that I got zoomed in from in all the way out. That was in Google. He led me through. I felt it. Right? I can see it coming from the small place like here in the meeting all the way out. And then, you know what he did? He actually said, turn around and even brought, her, <coughs> brought us out to space. But he didn't leave us out there, did he? No, he took us from the space, he reversed us, brought us all the way back to the club. That's what we call rounding of the speech. The speech is fully rounded. Very well done indeed. Talking about rounding the speech, he even finished the speech with another question. What was that? How small? <coughs> he finished the speech with, how small is the world? Really? So he finished with a question. So he tied the whole speech together, fully rounded. Very well done indeed. One of great, in fact, the greatest uh, strength in this speech was his use of Forces. For example, I'll quote you one. As we were zooming out to the city, he said, there were roads we never go down. Pause. And 
bridges we never cross. Pauses produce impact. Pauses emphasize his point. Very well done indeed. Just a couple of points to consider. First thing, the use of the video camera. I felt that he could have got the sergeant at arms prepared to do it for him so that he doesn't, he need not have made a rush entrance. He could have come in here in an orderly manner. Because first impression of a speaker coming to the lectern is very important. There's another area I'd like him to consider. He has good eye contact. But I felt that once in a while, his eyes sort of drifted somewhere. Lost that audience while he was thinking. Make sure that all the time eye contact is with the audience. Taking the speech as a whole, I thoroughly enjoyed it. He took us all for a lovely trip, Google trip, out and back in again. We have been led, enjoyably led throughout his speech, and he tied his speech well. I felt, ah, oh, that was a good speech.